To conduct a document review utilizing the Blackout Dates policy under the SQF Module 2.1.1p2, first check if the document title matches the uploaded file name on the dashboard. In this instance, we do have the same titles as Blackout Dates policy. Next, both must have the same document code. For this example, we do have 2.1.1px. And since this is a template, we indicate the PCQI as the account initials. However, we can customize the code based on the company's initials. For the page number, we use the page X of Y format to ensure that it reflects the current page position and the total page number of the document. Then insert the company logo here, together with the company name, the company address, and enter the designated department. For the originated by section, it can be the food safety, quality assurance, or the quality control personnel of the company. The originator ensures the implementation of the quality management and document control system. Enter the name of the originator, affix the signature, the position title, and the date originated. For the reviewed by section, it can be the personnel assigned in the quality management department who reviews the drafted document or its revision for accuracy and implementation. First enter the name of the reviewer, affix the signature, enter the position title, and the date reviewed. For the approved by section, it must be the person in the C-level management who has approval authority. First enter the name of the approver, affix the signature, input the position title, and the date approved. The revision date is the same as the date originated or drafted by the author. For the effective date, it is the date the document was signed and approved. The publication date is when the document is published for distribution and initiated personnel training. The implementation date is when the document is distributed and personnel training is completed. For the supersedes, put original for the initial issuance of the document. For any revisions, reflect the initial revision date before the current revision. Please be reminded that this section must be properly filled out to be compliant. Now we will focus on the components of the program. First is purpose. The purpose is the implementation of any certification standard or compliance with a regulatory requirement. For this program, it is for implementation with the SQF Module 2 Edition 9 for food manufacturing under Clause 2.1.1. The first purpose is to implement SQF 2.1.1.8. Senior Site Management shall designate defined blackout periods that prevent unannounced recertification audits from occurring out of season or when the site is not operating for legitimate business reasons. The list of blackout dates and their justification shall be submitted to the certification body a minimum of one month before the 60-day recertification window for the agreed-upon unannounced audit. And second, to identify specific dates per calendar year when the site is not operating for legitimate reasons. Second is scope. The scope of the program is based on the purpose and serves as a guide in defining and describing the layout of the procedure. It includes an announced audit, blackout periods, and the blackout dates list. Third is policy. The policies are the rules set by the company as their implementation guide. The policy is blackout dates are submitted to SQF with justification at a minimum of one month before the 60 day recertification window of an agreed upon unannounced audit. Fourth is procedure. The procedure is the step-by-step -step process and the actual implementation of the policy. Under procedure, we have SQF unannounced audit. The initial unannounced audit year is determined between the company and the certification body. Second, the unannounced audit is every three years. And the date of the unannounced audit is determined by the certification body within the 60-day recertification audit window. Second under procedure is blackout periods. A date nominated by the company and agreed by the certification body when an unannounced audit cannot occur due to a legitimate business reason. 
A blackout season are periods during the year where a company is not in full operation and thereof unable to have a fully comprehensive and announced audit conducted. Third under procedure is the blackout dates list. The blackout dates identified are New Year's Day, Memorial Day, the Independence Day, Thanksgiving Day, and the Christmas Day. You may also refer to blackout date schedule. Also, justifications for the said blackout lists are also indicated in the list above and submissions of blackout dates are submitted by SQF practitioners annually and will be reviewed and updated as needed with the approval of senior site management. Fifth is responsibility. The responsibility of the person is indicated. It covers what to perform to comply with the procedure or the policy. Under responsibility, we have the senior site management and the primary or alternate SQF practitioner. For the senior site management, senior site management and SQF shall assess the blackout dates. Senior management must identify blackout dates and update them annually. Create and designate defined blackout periods and identify specific dates per calendar year where hours of operation are unavailable. And, if there are adjustments needed, the list shall be updated along with its justification. For the primary or alternate SQF practitioner, submit the approved list of blackout dates to the certification body a minimum of one month before the 60-day recertification window of the unannounced scheduled audit. Sixth is corrective action. The corrective action is the process of taking appropriate steps to eliminate causes of nonconformities or other undesirable situations. 1. To prevent the recertification audit from occurring out of season or when the company is not operating for legitimate business reasons, submit the approved list of blackout dates to the certification body and if failed to submit the blackout dates list of the given period of submission to the certification body, the unannounced audit will be conducted by the certification body. Seventh, review quality. The review section serves as guidelines for conducting the annual or periodic review. SQF practitioner or senior site management shall conduct an annual review and update blackout dates for submission to the SQF certification body. Number eight is reference documents. The reference documents are the set of documents used to implement and monitor a program, policy, or procedure. We have here the blackout date schedule and the management responsibility program. Ninth is references. The reference section is composed of guides utilized to implement the program. Examples are the certification guide, regulations, and other widely accepted scientific journals, research, and the like. It must comply with the standard format citation which can be based on either MLA, APA, or the Chicago style and update the access date. Lastly, History. The History section is where we can update the program if there are any changes or revisions made in the document. If there is a revision, enter the revision number, the revision date, the description of the change made, the author or the originator's name. Lastly, the title or department of the author or the originator.